and we will get started. So thank you. Welcome if you're here and thank you for your patience while we wait for some more people to have signed up. Right here in the corner. And it's on here. Okay. It's unmuted.
So it is good to be together today in this different way and in this different space, even more different than we originally anticipated. If you've been able to follow this far, I'm grateful and sorry. And as much as I am standing in a familiar place and um, this scenery may look familiar to some of you, if we had any illusions that everything is the same, um, just an extra reminder that we know that they are not. And there's not a lot of use pretending that it is. If you are on the Zoom meeting, um, it, there should be somewhere on your screen, no matter what you're using, where there's a microphone button and it should, if you can make sure it's put so that it's red or muted or crossed out, not green. That will help everyone else um, be able to hear the things they're uh, meant to hear at the right moment. And um, you can also, you're, and the same thing with the video camera. You can turn that off. The um, video that you need to see should be available from the folks who are leading service. I hope that wherever you are right now that you have what you need for this moment. Hope if your anxiety or blood pressure rose in the last 40 minutes, like mine, that you can breathe deep and come and be present and close to God. If you're at home, the suggestion that we've offered is to have a space with some water or a candle to have a point of focus. I mean, that helps you be grounded and reminds you that God is with you exactly where you are. And if you want to be following along with this service with a worship bulletin um, on peaceoften.org, there is a PDF link where you can pull up this liturgy, including all the hymns that are part of it. So as we settle into our sacred ordinary spaces, we take a breath. And we prepare to come close to God, scripture, and through song, and through prayer, welcome to worship. The liturgy begins on page four of the booklet. We confess our sin and ask for God's forgiveness and grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness. And so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O oh God. Give us new 
hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bend our ear to your prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading is from Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 
Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then sent out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. For the psalm, we'll recite Psalm 23. You're welcome to listen or join in saying the psalm with me if you wish. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. And now we'll have a brief message for the children. Good morning, children, both young and old. Now, this is different. I never thought that I would be given a children's sermon from my kitchen. I'd rather be at church with you, but hey, isn't it great that we have another way to communicate and to visit? Uh, things are changing. I mean, there's no school, and some of your parents are staying home and working from home. Even though there's a lot of changes, uh, there are things that you can do. Now you can't go visit your friends and you can't go to a movie and you can't uh, go to a playground, but you can still learn. And if you listen today, you're going to learn about a good change when Pastor Carolyn reads the gospel. Now, this change is about a young man. This young man was blind from the time he was born. Can you imagine? He never, ever was able to see. Now, in order to get by, he became a beggar on the street. He would sit on the street. And one day, Jesus and the disciples were coming by. Jesus went over to him, and he did something really strange. He 
spit on the ground and made mud. Now, I know some of you are saying, ew, yuck, spit on the ground and made mud. But he did that. And he took the mud and he put it on the young man's eyes. Now, then he told the young man to do, go to Shalom. And from there, he should wash. Now, this young man never questioned anything. He had the mud put on his eyes, and then he went to the pool of Shion, and he washed. And as his eyes were clean, he could see. Now, can you imagine going from darkness and all of a sudden having light, seeing shapes, seeing, seeing people, seeing colors? How amazing is that? But you know what? I bet it was still a little bit frightening because it was so different from what he'd always known in darkness. Now, there are, there are many things and questions that you might have about this story. So later on, when Pastor Carolyn reads it, I want you to listen because there's a whole lot more to it. And then after the service today, get with your parents and talk about it. I have one more question for you. What are you doing to make the changes in your life better? Oh, I, I, I guess I can't hear any answers from you. So I'm going to make a couple of suggestions. One, try to do something new every day. Learn something new. If you had trouble at school, this is Go ahead and work on those things that were giving you problems. This is a perfect time. Another thing, and this is a suggestion I heard my wife give to our granddaughter, that you should go ahead and write a journal. Now, a journal is something where you take notes about what's happening in your life. Because you know what? When you're 50 years old, you're going to look back and say, man, what were you doing during the pandemic of 2020? And you'll know, you'll remember because you wrote it down. Now here's the main thing. Follow Jesus' example. By that, I mean help others. Now there's all kinds of ways that you can help others. You can help your parents, you know, set the table without being asked. Um, call call friends that you think might be lonely. Call a grandparent, or maybe even draw a picture and do a face chat with your grandparent and show them the picture. Oh, there are all kinds of ways you can help, and I bet you can think of many more. And one thing you're going to learn when you help is that you're also helping yourself. So remember, like the blind man in the story, Jesus will be with you through all the changes in your life, even this one. Let's pray. Gracious God, help us to learn from the changes in our lives, and thank you for always being with us. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now, it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, we see, 
your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sometimes, all the things you thought you knew just aren't enough to help you find your way. Sometimes everything you do to prepare isn't enough for things to go the way you'd hoped. And this is as true now as it was when John wrote his gospel. Today, we aren't sure what the way forward looks like. We are having to find new ways to be community, sometimes more than once in one morning, ways to rest in hope and to face our fears. And so it was in John's time too. Jesus' life and death and resurrection had changed everything, and yet the world was still a harsh and frightening place. And it wasn't easy to find new ways to be a community and to rest in hope and to face fear. Maybe you are accustomed to having a certain amount of confidence a sense that you know what will happen from one day to the next and what groceries will be on the shelves and where you will go and who you will see. That you will be safe and somehow life will be okay. Or maybe you already aren't accustomed to having that kind of confidence at all. But I'll tell you what, the life of the blind man whose story we hear from John today was probably more the latter than the former. Not so safe or certain. Full of people who wrote him off or assumed he was a sinner because of the misfortunes of his life. And yet as we listen to this story from John's gospel, this man who was born blind is the most faithful witness to Jesus of anyone he is the one who reveals God's glory, the most ready to believe what is being revealed. <laughs> he is the witness to the actions of God in the world. A blind witness. How about that? But you see, sometimes when you come to uncharted territory, what you need more than anything is someone who knows what it's like to live at the edges already to be your guide, someone who is less invested in the false securities of the world, with its thin veneer of safety hiding so much danger and uncertainty underneath it. Sometimes the best witness is a blind man. Sometimes the one who sees the most clearly is the one who can't see at all. The religious leaders who were so sure of what they knew couldn't perceive who was right in front of them. This man's parents, the ones who loved him and raised him, were so trapped in fear they could not go with him into a new way of being. And the man born blind is the one who showed them all the way, who points to Jesus. This story reminds me of another story every time I sit with it for very long, a story that happened in my lifetime. And you've maybe even heard me tell it before, if you've heard much from me before today, but I'm going to tell it again. You see, I was, I was in a biology class when the first plane hit the World Trade Center in September of 2001. Ah, and my aunt and uncle were also at school that day, a different school, the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired, because they are administrators there. 
and I just realized now that worship is on the internet, they could very well hear this sermon. And so I apologize in advance to them that I didn't ask permission to share this story, um, which I usually try to do with sermon stories. And I hope I get it right um, because I remember it from them telling it around the living room table once when we visited. Because in the years after the 9-11 attacks, they had someone come to the school to speak to the students, an adult man who, um, who is blind. And on September 11th, he was near the World Trade Center in the subway. He has a guide dog, and um, his dog was acting strangely that morning, trying to block his normal path um, in the subway, and he went anyway, I think, and, and soon understood exactly why his dog was acting strange as the dust and debris cloud flooded into the tunnel. It became hard to breathe. And as he was trying to find his way out, he heard another voice there in the tunnel, another man who was coughing and calling out, help me, help me, I can't see, I can't see. Eventually the blind man and his dog found his way to the voice. And this other man was just panicking coughing and flailing. He was disoriented because for him, the dust didn't only choke him, it also obscured his vision, the sense he was used to relying on to find his way. So he was still panicking. Even once the man got to him, he was continuing to say, I can't see, I can't see, I can't get out, I'm blind, I'm blind. Finally, the man who was accustomed to being blind had to physically touch him and say, it's okay, I'm blind too. We'll get out together. You see, it took someone in that moment who knew how to be blind to lead the frightened man to safety. Sometimes the blind are exactly the best qualified to lead the blind, no matter what the saying says. Sometimes it takes someone who lives with their limitations close at hand to show the rest of us the way to life and safety when our unearned confidence is pulled out from under us by the difficulty of the world as it really is. When that difficulty comes to certain leaders, religious or otherwise, they dig in their heels. When it comes to others, they react in fear and recoil or lash out. But for some, when it comes to those for whom struggle and hardship are familiar companions, a landscape that is walked every day, he might be more ready than anyone to show the way through. I think Jesus comes to heal the man born blind as much for the sake of his whole community as just the man's himself if the whole community is ready to receive it. Because we all need to know that God's glory is revealed in the places that are not walled off by false confidence or by fear, but rather are open in a kind of vulnerable presence that is willing to accept a stranger smearing mud on our face and telling us to go wash it off and see what happens. Though, not right now, of course, because we're not even supposed to touch our own faces, more or less let someone else do it. But metaphorically, right? In these days, I think we will find Jesus among the ones who are at the edges, who are thought of as sinners, or who don't know in the ways that powerful or influential people do, I think it is from them that we will learn. If we cling to our ways of knowing, we might never feel the freedom that comes from embracing our limits and truly living in what the moment holds for us. We are finite. We are fragile. And we are beloved. When we feel disoriented by the world, turned upside down by our, our vision being clouded over, by not being able to find our way in the same ways we used to, maybe it is the ones who already know how to walk blind in an upside down world that God will give us to show us the way. 
healthcare workers and store clerks, child caregivers, the garbage collectors, the teachers, the poor, the disabled people of color, LGBTQ people, these people are geniuses at caring for others, at building community from the ground up, at living abundantly in the midst of scarcity and knowing that we are all connected and that our fate is bound up together. God reveals God's glory in the lives of those we often forget first, who may never make the Fortune 500 or get a PhD. It is frightening to find ourselves suddenly blind. But Jesus is here to show us the way that we were never going to be able to find for ourselves anyway. Let us listen for the ones he sends to us and walk forward in faith. Because the fact is the blind leading the blind could be the best chance we've got. God sends us who we need even before we are ready to receive them. Let us look for God and for who God is sending because God never leaves us alone. Even in our isolation, we are held in God's embrace. And God's embrace is wide enough to hold us all. And so in God's arms, we are together in all of this. And for that, I believe we can truly say, thanks be to God. Amen.
We are seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Each petition will end, hear us, O God, to which you may respond, your mercy is great. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power, especially those often disregarded. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, ability, or economic status. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow. Bring rain to land suffering drought. Protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause violence or terror. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who need your healing presence today, especially Olivia, Roger, Abby, Bill, George, Judy, and Yvonne. All those throughout the world currently battling the coronavirus and all those that we name before you silently or alive. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all who work for health and healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Help all who are a part of this worship to lift up the unique gifts of each person, no matter their physical capacity, cognitive ability, or sensory needs. Help us to be creative and brave and making our ministries accessible to all in a celebration of the image of God in each of us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, we cry out to you in our need and in our joy. Be with those who celebrate this week, anniversaries, birthdays, and other milestones, especially Kay, Mike, Katie, Holly, Dorothy, Tom, Janet, Lynn, and Tessa. And receive all the prayers we bring before you now that we speak aloud or hold in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for your saints, especially Chuck. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, receive these in all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you, if you are somewhere with others, to share a sign of God's peace with them. And if you are on your own in the physical space where you are, perhaps meditate on the peace that you wish to send out into the world today. And then we will hear 
musical offering as we reflect on the gifts that we have of God and how we can offer them in this unusual time. If you wish to continue to make an, an offering to church, even while you're not here, our website has a give button. Um, I do not know if Lord of Life, who is worshiping with us, has a give button on their website, but you may think about how you feel called to give in this time or rest in the promise that there is care for you if now is not a time when you can give because of the challenges that we are facing. Or know that you have other things to give, even when economic hardships are our reality. We'll hear the offering music now. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw us near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us in the language closest to each of our hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we sing the hymns on the following pages.
Friends, I am so glad you are here. It's an anxious time, and many of our routines are all upside down. Thank you for your grace this morning as we were a little bit upside down and inside out ourselves. We will keep working to make this worship experience the best thing it can be. In the time we have, we will be reading and catching up on any comments that you left in different places that we didn't get to during the live stream. Um, thank you for being present, for offering feedback, and for coming back again, um, even when things aren't perfect. We're grateful for you. We're grateful for everyone who helped make this worship service happen. So thank you. I didn't say at the beginning of the service, but a special welcome uh, to Lord of Life Lutheran Church that will be worshiping um, with us jointly. Uh, from this physical space for our live stream, but truly a worship service of both our congregations. Pastor Debbie, uh, your pastor right now, will bring a message now and then that we'll have connections from both places. If anyone from either community, or at, I guess even if you're not from one of our communities um, normally, would like to offer maybe a piece of special music or something sometime, if there's something you can do with voices and instruments in your place, you can join just the same way that um, our lector Tom and our children's message giver Ernie did today. Um, and so we can share in leadership together in many ways. Thank you to those who helped lead worship this morning in that way. Um, one of the ways that we hope at Peace to help bring some reliability and routine to our days, even as we're so disrupted, is to have a pretty regular schedule for our online content, um, which will go on our website and Facebook pages again, as we make sure that we have technology set up in the best way that we can. So there will be a post about this and it will be on our homepage and it'll be in our weekly email this week, but you can look to um, morning prayer at 9 a.m., just a simple service of a spoken morning prayer on Mondays at nine on Facebook Live, including time for you to submit prayer requests in the comments as we get our week going. On Tuesday evenings, we're going to start um, a book conversation um, that we'll meet by GoToMeeting at 8 p.m. We're gonna read Love Big by Rosella White. Um, and so we'll join this Tuesday at eight. And if you don't have the book yet or haven't read yet, that's fine. We'll read a portion out loud together and, and reflect and then dive fully into the first chapter in a week. On Wednesdays, we have a GoToMeeting kind of dinner chat and check-in at 6 p.m., although Matt Bloom would say 6.20 is really when we should show up. Um, and then we'll be live streaming Hold an Evening Prayer at 7 p.m. 
On Thursdays at 7 p.m., our music director, Kristen Morrow, is offering to host a time for musical reflection and also maybe to take some hymn requests so that you can uh, hear or sing those favorite hymns of yours. If you need a hymnal for your use for home devotions in this time, let me know in a comment or an email, and um, I'll be happy to deliver one freshly sanitized to your doorstep for you to use and uh, borrow during this time. On Fridays, we'll have a weekly email update that will go out, including links for all of the things that you might need a you know, special access point to for the coming week. And then we'll close the day with a simple night prayer service at 9 p.m. on Fridays. Again, a time to just speak our prayers um, and offer them together. And then Sundays, our intention is to have our worship live stream at 10 a.m. and Godly Play Story available at 11.30. Today, of course, we'll, that will be delayed a little bit, but a Godly Play Story will begin on Facebook Live shortly for those who want to join. And then um, community connections, our normal education sessions, which are led by many different people, will often be at 1 o'clock on Sundays, um, but it will depend on the leader and their schedule. So you'll see notices about that on a variety of topics. And then we'll close Sundays with, um, again, dinner and lectionary conversation about the text from the morning at 5 p.m. That has been a time that our new member class has been gathering water from the well. Um, and they are inviting all of you who want to, to join in that group for dinner and for conversation on the lectionary. Again, go to meeting links will go out with the weekly email, or you can always contact office at Peace Austin if you have any questions or need any help connecting. And lastly, this is the most important part. So if you tuned me out, come back um, for just a minute because the most important thing I think we can all do is stay connected to one another during this time. And some of us are not big internet people. If you're still here, you probably are because you followed us to a whole different like platform to get to worship. So thank you and we're glad you're here, but not everyone will get to these places. So I um, would suggest a spiritual practice you could join me in, which is Use your church directory. Uh, use it to call or contact the three names above yours and the three names below yours each week in some way. Um, and that can help us all kind of knit ourselves together as community when we can't physically be in the same space in this odd, isolating time. I know the peace directory is a little bit out of date. Start with what you have and we'll be putting um, an updated one out shortly. Uh, so that will be a way that we can connect to one another. and. Um, I, I hope it's okay with my Lord of Life leaders that I suggested that. You can take up that practice if it is life-giving for you as well. So now I invite you to receive the blessing. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, free you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen.
now. Go forth from this time of worship and peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.